most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work we literally have to become somebody else so then you would have to agree with me then then all this information that you're learning today n would inspire new thoughts yes and new thoughts should lead to new choices yes and new choices should lead to new behaviors and new behaviors should lead to new experiences and then new experiences should create new emotions yes and new emotions should inspire new thoughts and that's called evolution yes so then those emotions that Greg uh, was talking about this morning the majority of people in the Western world spend the majority of their life living by the hormones of stress now stress is when your body's knocked out of homeostasis the stress the body innately does to return itself back to order that's the first definition of resilience now you have three types of stress you have physical stress like an injury an accident a fall a trauma you have chemical stress like uh, viruses and bacteria and blood sugar levels and heavy metals and hormones and foods and hangovers and then you have emotional stress right traffic jams and internet connections and second mortgages and single parenting and 401ks and each one of those things knocks your brain and body out of balance and all organisms in nature can tolerate short-term stress if the deer gets chased by a pack of coyotes if the deer outruns the coyotes 15 minutes later it goes back to grazing and the stress is over human beings are different we can turn on the stress response just by thought alone just by thought alone you can begin to think about some future worst-case scenario and because the privilege of human beings is that we can make thought more real than anything else we can focus on that possibility to the exclusion of everything else and you can knock your body out of physiological balance just by thought alone and your body as the unconscious mind believes it's in that experience in the present moment and we can unfold past, uh, past bitter memories that are that are tattooed in the recesses of our gray matter and like magic we bring them to life and in that moment it's real and so the hormones of stress long term push the genetic buttons that create disease and no organism can tolerate living in emergency mode for extended periods of time so then think about this you turn on the stress response just by thought alone how many people have done that you've done that it's called being human right and we know that the hormones of stress dysregulate and downregulate genes to create disease so that means then your thoughts can make you sick so here's my question if your thoughts can make you sick can your thoughts make you well I'm talking to the right audience so then the hormones of stress though give the body and brain a rush of energy and it's like a narcotic it becomes a drug and people become very addicted to the adrenaline and the stress hormones and they use the problems and conditions in their life to reaffirm their emotional addiction so they can remember who they think they are. remember who they think they are the bad relationship the bad job the terrible circumstances all of that is in place because the person needs that to reaffirm their emotional addiction because God forbid they couldn't feel anything so then if the hormones of stress become like a narcotic and you can turn on the stress response just by thought alone then we could become addicted to our own thoughts how many people are still with me so then if you become addicted to your own thoughts when it becomes when it comes time to change then you can understand then just like an addict the moment you're no longer thinking certain thoughts that are making certain chemicals for you to feel a certain way and those feelings drive the same thoughts you know like if you have an insecure thought you begin to feel insecure right come on and the moment you feel insecure you're gonna think more insecure thoughts yes and if you keep doing that for 20 or 30 years it's gonna feel pretty familiar 
I am insecure. Well, whenever you say I am anything, what you're saying is you're commanding your mind and body towards a destiny. So if the body has been conditioned to the mind of insecurity, don't you think then the moment you're no longer going to think insecure thoughts and fire and wire those circuits in your brain and then produce the blend of chemicals for you to feel that way, don't you know your body is going to do what? It's going to look back up at your brain and say, hey, I modified my receptor sites for you. We've been doing this for 20 years. I'm counting on those chemicals coming. Now you're just going to stop? And it's going to start sending signals back to the brain. And the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before. So these people understood that their 20 years of hatred, or their 30 years of anger, or their 15 years, or their 15 years of fear or insecurity, was the very reason that they were sick. And because feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences and we can remember experiences better because we can remember how they feel if uh, the environment signals the gene and the environment produces a chemical reaction then as long as you're feeling the same way every single day there's no new information coming from the environment and you keep signaling the same gene how many people are with me so then the emotions of anger aggression and hurt and hostility and hatred and prejudice and fear and anxiety and insecurity and hopelessness and powerlessness and depression guilt and shame those are all familiar emotions to us because we've experienced the events correlated with them how many people are still with me and it's those derived from the hormones of stress and if you keep knocking your body out of balance that imbalance becomes the new balance and you're headed for some type of disease. And these people began to realize that they had to change that. And when we react to something or someone in our life, there's always a change in our chemical state. We're altered in some way. And if you don't know how to control your emotional reaction to that event in your life, and that chemical refractory period continues for hours or days, that's called a mood. What's wrong with you? I'm in a mood. Oh, really? Why? Thought you'd never ask. Well, this thing happened to me five days ago. And I'm living by the same emotional reaction. Now, if you keep that refractory period going on, now, if you keep that refractory period going on for weeks, for months that's called the temperament why is he so angry I don't know why are you so angry well this experience happened to me nine months ago and I'm living by the same emotional reaction one long refractory period and if you keep it going on for years on end that's called a personality trait and most people wear their emotions layer by layer and they believe that's who they are and there was an article in Scientific American just two months ago that scientists said that 50% of what you say about your past is not true. Because you're not the same person. You make up stuff. And so then, if feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, now stay with me. Did Greg say we need to... So how many people in this audience believe that the way you think has something to do with your life? You do, yes? Okay, so feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, yes? You can remember experiences better because you can remember how they feel, yes? So then, if you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, are you thinking in the future or are you thinking in the past? And as long as you're thinking in the past, what are you creating more of? Quantum model of reality still applies. And so, if you're feeling the same way every single day, then according to our biological model, it means nothing new is happening in your life. Is that right? Because how many potentials exist in the quantum field? How many? So with every new experience, there should be a pretty good emotion, right? 
You should feel overjoyed or in awe and wonder. Feel overjoyed or in awe and wonder, or excited or inspired or in gratitude or appreciation, an elevated emotion. But living by those same familiar emotions means nothing new is happening in your life, and the body as the unconscious mind. As long as we're living in the same familiar feelings, is believing it's in the same past experience, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And if the body's become the mind of that emotion, then the body literally is living in the past, and we can't create a new future holding on to the emotions of the past. So these people began to realize that no one or nothing was worth it. And that the hormones of stress endorse the ego for us to become selfish, because when an animal is threatened by something in its external, in the organism, in emergency and survival, is to take care of the self, and we identify the self as a body in the environment and in time. When the zebra is being chased by the lion, she's only concerned about three things: her body. I better take care of this, so I better put my attention on it. The environment: where am I going to go, and how much time do I have to get there? And when you and I live by the cocktail of those stress hormones, we obsess about our bodies, our hairstyle, our face, our weight, our problems, things in our environment, things we have, things we don't have, and we obsess about time. But that's not who you are, because as long as you're living by the hormones of stress. You're living as a materialist because the hormones of stress cause us to believe that the outer world is more real than the inner world, and those hormones absolutely and those hormones absolutely make us feel separate from possibility. Why? Because when you're being chased by a lion, it's not time to create. It's not time to trust. It's not.